Did you ever race yourself? Yeah, badly. <laughs> <laughs> didn't didn't go well? well? I loved it. Yeah. But it was too expensive for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's such a good game. And such good people. And most of my friends today, the serious friends that go deeply into my background, came out of racing in Vermont. They're dying off, as we all do. But they created a whole new atmosphere that people hadn't thought about because it didn't exist. And they'd run the britches off those cars. And when they raced, they raced as if it was really serious. And kids loved it. Mm. Well, because kids love race cars. Yeah. What did your parents think of you racing? They were ambiguous. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew shortly that I had something better that I could do, which is talk. I could blab <laughs> and make these guys that ran at our racetrack, Hard Luck Hannaford, the Ingerson brothers, those kind of people, really important. Ingerson brothers were lumberjacks over in New Hampshire. They were the regular working people that had found something they could do and they could add it into the other things that were being done by others and done for them. That was a high point in their lives because they could do it. And they got cagey enough, smart enough, build cars that were durable to stand the gaff and win races. Same thing happened in the Southeast, certainly happened out West. That's sort of the history of stock car racing. I think it goes back to about the time that Daytona got built. And heretofore, that was something that other people did. But when they built Daytona, Bill France mm -hmm. and company, there was an opportunity to have this two and a half mile track where they could really go, take the risk if they dared, and make it meaningful. Changed everything. And we're seeing it today. We're into a new generation of it. And they are so different today than even 20 years ago. These kids that have come up now and have the ability to learn how to drive by hook or by crook by using things that we know nothing about. And they're putting on tremendous races. That couldn't have happened back then. So it's all part of the growth and the changing of the way. But it makes it more important ever to me that they're there and they're doing it. It's amazing to see how technical racing is today. <laughs> it comes down to hundredths of an inch in terms of yeah. shaping a body and everything. We've learned so much about racing. Well, we learned how to cheat too. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about that? Is is cheating cheating or is it? No, no, no. I mean, they have to catch them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and that's same thing as baseball or football or tennis or anything you want to say. But it's it's got some vitality to it that the others, in my mind, don't have. And demand so much that nobody knows about. These families that build cars that would run at the nation's site of excitement, Thunder Road, huh? that's a great challenge. Putting that car together, making it stay together, and make it consistently victorious. That's the best story of America there is. Some of that gets lost, but not all. And then the higher level of that is what we see at Daytona and what NASCAR continues to represent. I think that's terrific. We love stories of creativity, as we call it, not cheating. Yeah. Um, were there any good ones <laughs> of, of people pushing the boundaries at Thunder Road or some of these local tracks that you remember? 
nearly every way. <laughs> what, were, what are some examples? Somebody would, would, well, they would come up with different ideas about how to get around the track. <laughs> That's theirs, not mine. We'll leave that subject alone. <laughs> we'll leave it alone.